It's spooky season and Halloween is right around the corner and our friends at Murkov have just dished out a brand new program for the reagents to participate in. This time the Truth and Justice program which is the first post-release program to be released for our last trials. Oh and Murkov was nice enough to even throw in some festive decorations and we also have a chessboard to entertain ourselves in between our moments of fighting for our life. Thank you Murkov. Just like Mother Gooseberry with the carnival and orphanage, Murkov has now transferred Coil from the police station to his brand new set, the courthouse. The reagents need another lesson in justice and loyalty, and Easterman is happy to oblige, mentioning that we must all fight for and protect the people who help us, Murkov, and that our goal is to kill the judge and make them pay for crossing them. I really do have to admit, Whoever is doing the set design for Murkov needs a raise, because this is some impressive stuff. Once you reach the main lobby, you really get a feeling of Murkov justice deep down, but the reagents waste no time in getting into the courtroom. Coyle makes his first appearance at the new set, as he explains that the wheels of justice might turn slowly, but nobody can avoid his justice in the end. You know, just normal Coyle things. The courtroom has a set of mannequins set out as lawyers, the jury, and an audience to observe the trial. You might notice the accused on the side here, while the judge is tied up and has a bag over her head over on the stand. One of the lawyer mannequins addresses the room, saying that the accused is on trial for kidnapping, torture, and cutting up four people, but mentions that there's no evidence. The accused on the stand also mentions that she's innocent and we continue onwards. The accused mannequin represents Murkov in this twisted situation as the reagents need to learn what is needed to keep Murkov safe. I took a few minutes to sit next to the judge and listen to the different things that she says. And other than the fact that she doesn't feel she deserves what's going on for her, she mentions that we should kill the doll and that it was only a doll. It did get me wondering if this might actually be the judge that convicted and sentenced Phyllis Futterman, aka Mother Gooseberry. Since the charges the accused was on trial for were very similar to that of Phyllis, and the reference to the doll could be alluding to her duck puppet, Dr. Futterman. Let me know what you think if I'm onto something there in the comments. Anyway, the reagents will need to collect the evidence for the case, and this includes a puzzle right out of the movie 7. When you activate the box, a timer will begin, and a black light will reveal numbers hidden around the room next to a pyramid that is either filled, partially filled, or completely empty. The correct order for the code is by doing it in order of the lowest to the highest, aka you take the empty pyramid first, then the one section filled in, two sections filled in, and then finally the whole section filled in. The evidence in question is a human head that will need to be taken outside to a fountain. Once placed inside, they will need to collect acid to act as the liquid for the fountain. Acid, heads, fountain. You can probably guess what's happening here and find the remaining heads of the accused's victims and continue to place them within our acid fountain. Once the reagents have destroyed the evidence, they return to the courtroom, as the defense lawyer mentions that the case should now be thrown out for lack of evidence. Coyle shows up and says that he has taught some of his friends what to say in order to get a conviction. Now, the reagents need to have some witnesses killed. You might have noticed these guys in previous trials, but they act as the screamers. The reagents are provided with a device that causes their heads to explode and a separate device to track them down around the courthouse while Coyle chases you down. Once the reagents have dispatched of the witnesses, we return to the courthouse to prove that without evidence and witnesses, there is no case. Now it's time to teach the judge a thing or two, which, much like the chapel scene in the orphanage, is very graphic. And let's just say that the judge gets the hammers of justice. Pretty damn bad. In the legs arms and the head. Once the judge has been dispatched, the reagents will return to the sleeping quarters for Halloween festivities and apple juice. That is until they need to finish the following two challenges for the program to end. The next returns us to Coyle's police station from the first program, but this time we are releasing the prisoners instead of executing them. This once again putting into the reagents' mind that there is no length that they cannot go to in order to keep Murkov's interests safe and secure even if it takes breaking them out of prison if need be. And once again, I would like to compliment the set design team of Murkov for rearranging the police station to get a new feel as you go back through. The second challenge is a bit more of a surprise. 
This time, we're making our way back to the orphanage set with Mother Gooseberry, as Easterman encourages obedience and urges us to accept the challenges and lessons taught to grow into a new person. This one's a bit more foul, <laughs> to be honest with you. The idea is that the reagents need to go into the orphanage and collect some of the children, which I do want to remind everyone are mannequins, not real ones, but still. There is a van outside which literally says free candy on the side of it, and the nuns inside the van explain that the children mannequins need to go to confessional. Good old Mother Goose is as terrifying as ever, and once you find the power shutoff locations, the children can be saved and placed into the van outside. Damn, what a sentence. After a long day of destroying evidence, killing witnesses, judges, and releasing prisoners and saving children, the reagents get to head back to the sleeping quarters for some much-needed rest until Murkov unleashes their next twisted program for them to enjoy, probably in three to four months, but it's hard to say. Thank you for watching the video, as always. If you made it to the end of the video, just put in Wheels of Justice so I can see in the comments down below that you did. Also, there are a bunch of new documents that can be found throughout the new trial, which expands on the law that we covered back in June in this video. I am working on that right now, and expect that video to be out in the next few days. I also want to get a video out about the prime asset that we have yet to see, called Whitehorn, which is rumored to be coming out next, and the details that we know about him. So if these things interest you in any way at all, remember to subscribe so you can be notified when they're released. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it as it helps out the channel a bunch. Thank you so much once again, guys. Until next time, peace.